It's all green today, so we're feeling happy. It seems investors have forgotten about all the volatility. Uh, tell me, do you think this is sustainable? Do you think that we might see some more problems coming to the fore? Because every day we just keep getting surprises. I think the only thing that is guaranteed at the moment is volatility. So um, it's good to see a green day. We've certainly been pummeled quite hard in recent times. So um, working for Nedbank, it's always great to see a green day. <laughs> okay, Narina, there's various things that have happened as well today on the economic front in South Africa. PPI coming in at 5.5% in April. So quickening more than expected. Uh, and of course, from 3.7% the previous month. So what does that actually spell for the likes of inter a possible interest rate cuts in South Africa? Well, it's certainly much higher than the market expected, and I haven't really had a look at, at the number in a lot of detail, but it would appear as though um, there was quite a big jump in imported commodities. Um, so that would certainly refer to the, the height in the oil price that we've seen, um, re um, recalling that the oil price just recently was over $80 a barrel. So mm -hmm. um, that would certainly explain part of it. And with the oil price having um, moderated quite substantially during May, I guess we will have some relief from that. Also, of course, the, the Iran having weakened um, in recent times and now over the last couple of days having strengthened again, I think we might see a bit of an easier number um, with the next PPI coming out. But to answer the second part of your question in terms of what this could possibly mean for, uh, for future interest rate hikes, we do know that PPI often leads a CPI and after seeing yesterday that the consumer price inflation number came out better than expected and today the PPI number worse than expected, I guess over the medium term it might imply that there would be further pressure on the on the current relatively benign inflation scenario that we are experiencing. So I think when the Monetary Policy Committee meets next, this certainly will go into their pot and I think maybe just um, uh, remove a little bit of some of the optimism for those that are hoping to see further interest rate cuts from the current um, already record low levels that we have. Well, Narina, it's quite interesting because we had the OECD saying that there is room for another interest rate cut here in South Africa and they're also feeling very optimistic because they're talking about growth of 3.3 percent for 2010 and 5% for next year some say this is overly optimistic so it's all about emerging markets and this is where the growth is going to come from Yes, certainly the six-month review that they published yesterday, um, a significant um, improvement in sentiment from the one that they released in November last year. Um, they've upped their forecast for world growth for 2010 from 3.4% um, to 4.75%, but the significant upgrades really did come in the emerging market space um, because developed markets, they only see a marginal improvement. Um, I do smile at the comment that they make that some people accuse them of being schizophrenic. Um, for wanting to at the same time try and um, reduce the stimulus but also keep the markets buoyant. So <laughs> I guess it's pretty much the same sort of expectation that is being be placed on the South African authorities and really authorities around the world who are at the same time expected to rein in um, rampant spending and, and to avert any further debt crises that might come about mm -hmm. but at the same time avert um, a recession. So they do need growth but they can't afford a debt spiral. So it really is a dichotomy and I think that really gives us a very good indication of where a lot of the market volatility is coming from because the market tends to react on what the latest bit of information is that is out. So if it is anything good, the market team seems to take it to heart and run up. If it is slightly bad, the market takes that very negatively and say, oh, terrible news, let's just uh, sell the market down. And, and I don't expect that to change anytime soon. Well, Narina, I think you hit the nail on the head there when you said, you know, about debt spiraling out of control. And we know that most of the growth that we have been seeing is mostly part and parcel of the, the stimulus that we've been seeing. So it'll be interesting to see what, how that plays out. But looking at the likes of Richmond, which came out with numbers today, and we know luxury goods are not faring quite well in recessionary times. But at the end of the day, we saw profits down 18%. Of course, full year profits out from from continuing operations. Uh, where do you see those numbers going from here onwards? Because the chairman is still relatively bearish. Yes, I think he's, um, I, I would rather call it cautious rather than bearish. And I think what was quite heartening for us in the Richmond set of results was the was the exceptional improvement in their cash position. This is quite unusual for a um, essentially a cyclical play, if you think about it. Um, they've been able to improve their cash, cash position quite substantially. And this really puts them in a very, very good um, way, almost regardless of how the economy plays itself out over the, over the near term. 
um, because should there be um, opportunities for expansion or acquisitions, they will certainly be in a position to take these up and expand operations. But should there be any further worsening in the debt um, situation in Europe and the rest of the world, they will be able to withstand that must, this much better. Um, so yes, he's been cautious and he's certainly been defensively positioned in, in how he does it. They've cut costs substantially as well. They see very good growth coming out of Asia, um, not including Japan. Japan continues to be a problem for them, um, but their growth out of Asia has really helped them to maintain a reasonable level of growth. Yes, it's lower than it's been, but considering that this is a luxury good play, essentially a play on, on, on world growth, then considering that we've just come out of one of the worst recessions ever, mm. I think certainly a very good set of results for Richemont. Standard Bank saying headline earnings in the first four months of this year up 7% and this just really proves that the banking sector is still relatively muted and many are questioning when we're going to be seeing the 20 and 30% growth that we saw during the good times. Yes, and I think um, I actually think that the, the Standard Bank um, trading update is slightly negative, and we certainly see the market also um, uh, taking some money off the table from banks today. Um, for example, if we look at through the numbers of Standard Bank, we must bear in mind that the Liberty component in there is coming off a very low base, and out of that seven percent um, improvement, we expect that the Liberty component could account for as much as ten percent, which would mean that the banking operations are actually negative. Um, they have attributed um, negative numbers from both their net interest income as well as the growth of their book. And uh, yes, cautious, but also still painting a slightly um, negative picture for the consumer market. On the bad debt side also, they've indicated that they are going to continue to be cautious and specifically alluding to the potential for corporate bad debts. And um, once again, maybe um, a, set, uh, a management that is um, cautious rather than, than too optimistic. And it might stand them in good stead, but it's interesting to see that the market is not taking too kindly to the mm. banking sector today.